All right, good. Uh, thanks everyone for joining the session today. Uh, we are going to touch base uh, how, what are the best practices that we need to follow or we can follow to implement our uh, natural language understanding. Uh, that is one of the offering uh, within the Service Now platform. Uh, before we jump in, um, quick reminder on the safe harbor notice. Um, I'm going to uh, use statement. Uh, if any statement is forward looking, then uh, uh, we don't want you to uh, you know, make your buying decisions based on those forward looking statements. So with this, uh, let me move on to next slide. A uh, little introduction about me, uh, Jitu Johan, based out of uh, ServiceNow uh, India Bangalore office. Uh, I'm part of product success management group here and uh, uh, really welcoming everyone. Um, and hopefully you will have a, a you know better understanding on the NLU best practices today. Um, with this, um, so similar the one we have live now session today, we do have a few more uh, sessions lined up. Um, something that you guys can also join uh, in future. Uh, let me put the link here so you can follow this link and and please do sign up uh, uh, for the future sessions all right um just quick housekeeping rules so this session is is going to uh, record and it is going to post it on the community um, site service community site so uh, you can access the, those recordings uh, you will also have uh, the ppt uh, as well there um uh, during the mid session, if you have any questions, please do utilize the Q and A button available in in uh, in the Zoom app. Um, I'll try to pick in questions in between. Um, yeah, and don't forget to fill in survey. So once we complete the session today, you will have uh, a survey prompted. Uh, uh, please fill in your responses. Uh, that is, those are really valuable for us to uh, improve further. Yeah. With this, I think we can start the session. Before starting the session, I would like to know uh, about the audience. Um, I will just run through one quick poll and I would like everyone to respond that poll. Just to see um, how much aware uh, you are about the NLU. Um, so maybe some of the folks they're already using NLU, then it's good. Like. All right, give me a few more seconds. And let me switch off my video to have bigger screen. Good, I can a few more just waiting. Awesome. Awesome. I think I can now end the poll. I think two folks here to respond. All right, good. Let me end the poll. Good. Uh, so what it looks like, uh, we have majority of the folks we have, they are already using or they are familiar about the NLU. So they're looking for best practices, tips, and tricks. A uh, few folks, they're not familiar. No worries. Uh, I'll just try to cover some basics uh, in a few five minutes, and then uh, we'll move on to best practices. Awesome. Good. Um, let me close this. Um, all right. So uh, before we jump in, um, I would like to just let you know a couple of terms, uh, uh, which are generally we use in our day-to-day -day, uh, human conversations. So there is uh, one of the important term called intent. Hey, before going jump, so why I'm showing this picture here is um, sometimes, you know, we have um, our own understanding about keywords and, um, and the phrases that we use. So if you can see here, I can recall one incident where, um, you know, a um, few folks in the team meeting, they, they were talking about, uh, um, Hey, where is my zebra? Where is my zebra? So, so uh, one of the contractor guy he was really shocked. You know why you guys are looking for zebra? So what their intent was basically their intent was to uh, 
calling Zebra is uh, a Zebra printer. Um, so there's a company who make uh, uh, printers. Uh, the company name is Zebra. So, uh, you know, so this is something sometimes it's very unusual. Uh, uh, we as a human, we will try to draw intent, uh, which was not, uh, you know, um, which is not um, assumed by the uh, by the speaker. So uh, this is where NLU comes into picture. Uh, NLU is really um, able to help machine to draw the intents behind those conversations. So if you can really train your model, then literally a system can able to differentiate uh, uh, based on uh, based on the samples, uh, you know, people they are talking about uh, the zebra animal or uh, zebra printer. So uh, probably we'll learn more about this, uh, about NLU. Before we jump in, quick uh, reminder on a couple of uh, important terms. So what we call intents. Uh, intents is something that user want to do or user want to perform a kind of action. So if you remember, uh, if I can just give you an example of uh, I want to update my email ID, right? So what is the intent behind it? Update. So that's what the intent is. And these are the very important terms I am keep using during my session. Um, so intent is nothing but um, what exactly user want to do, right? Um, utterances are the way user will uh, uh, will speak, the way user will uh, communicate uh, about the intent. That is what the utterance is. Uh, if you see example, um, you know, uh, incident, short description. Um, uh, if you see the short description, people say, I am having issues with the, uh, with the email ID. So, uh, and they can use different phrases. Uh, my email ID is not working. My email is not working. I'm not able to send email. So those are different ways that uh, human can uh, put together their description of the problem. So that's what the utterance is. Uh, entities is nothing but the object or the context uh, that we are talking. So if anyone is, is saying that, hey, uh, my laptop is broken. So laptop is nothing but the entity uh, in this uh, uh, address. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about the different type of entities. We have three different type of entities uh, defined system entities, which is defined by system. User can also define their own entities. Uh, and we have some common entities, uh, for example, currency or date, all those things. There is an important concept called vocabulary. So if you recall the example of Zebra here, um, you know, uh, sometimes people, they use same terms in different uh, ways. So what we can do, um, and even sometimes, you know, uh, words, they are not part of dictionary, um, you know, acronyms, uh, some industry standard terms, um, or terms which are used, you know, in different way, uh, zebra for animal as well as uh, printer. So you can define vocabulary um, and really you can indicate your system at what point of time system need to differentiate, uh, you know, what is the correct synonym for any term. So if anyone, you know, um, typing a zebra, then system can understand. Yeah. So usually uh, uh, in my organization, people, they talk about zebra. That means printer, not, not the animal. So you can define vocabulary. Um, we have something concept called NAD models. So those are the machine learning models, uh, you know, which uh, need to be trained on sample uh, utterances, and they will help you to predict the right uh, 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 intents behind any utterance. So these are the basic terms. Before I move on, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, I don't see any question. Awesome. Uh, all right, so um, just a quick uh, um, a quick summary, how, how that exactly works in the background. So if you recall um, one of the requests from users, say, um, you know, uh, that user is interacting with a virtual agent and, and want to update email ID, right? So in the traditional way, um, in the historical way, we used to have something called topic uh, uh, conversation. So uh, before NLU world, before machine learning world, we used to have this kind of flow uh, in the system, which will um, start uh, once the user type any utterance or question, you know, it will go step by step. Uh, okay, you want to update. So virtual agent may ask a couple of questions just to confirm because that is not smart enough, right? To, to determine the intent behind the actual uh, user's question. So, you know, we will ask question, hey, do you want to update the email ID? Yes. Then user will say yes. Then um, 
we again will say, okay, what is your uh, uh, new email ID that you want to update? So all those are additional uh, steps were there, which was really time consuming and not not so smart um, enough. So NLU is really uh, making a lot of difference there. Uh, NLU is smart enough to decide to pick the right intent behind of any uh, utterance. So if any user want to update email ID, then it can really break out the entire uh, phrase into different part. It can really determine the intent behind this uh, uh, conversation. So intent here is update profile. Um, it can really determine what is the item here. So item here in this case, uh, user want to update the email ID, right? And what is the value for this do, This item is value. So basically NLU can bypass a lot of unnecessary questions and make your conversation smart to update or you know act on the user's request uh, by making some decisions based on the, the models or the predictions. Right. So you can see here um, uh, with the help of NLU, uh, system was able to update the profile. Uh, what what field in the profile? Basically email ID and uh, update the new email ID without asking uh, any more questions from user. So you can you can imagine how smart uh, uh, you know NLU or the or the model world is. Okay, good. Um, let me move on further. Um, so since we are in the uh, we are in the best practices session today, not the implementation of NLU. So I'm gonna skip the implementation model, uh, implementation cycle. I'm gonna talk about the Turing cycle here. Uh, before that, I can see one question. Item means entity. You're right. Yes, yes, Ramandi. So there's a question. Uh, uh, item means what? Item means entity. Yes. So in previous example, email was was uh, an item or entity. Yeah. Okay. So I was talking about the tuning cycle, right? So instead of talking about implementation cycle, I would like to focus on the tuning cycle. Oops. Great. Close. All right. So um, so this is how the cycle works. Um, typically, um, we plan our um, NLU models, we build those NLU models in ServiceNow, and I'll tell you um, how easy it is by using the workbench. Um, and then we'll test the test our models. Um, you know, uh, um, if, if we are doing this first time, then probably we don't need to tune. So it is automatically tuned. Then, um, you know, if, if results, test results are satisfied enough, then go and deploy monitor. Uh, with time move, uh, there uh, you know, uh, there is a requirement that you keep eyes on your model performance and uh, time to time you need to tune your model so that you can have a best performance as you expected. So this is what the cycle you can follow. Um, once once you think that it's right time to tune and how you can determine the tuning, you can you can use a couple of tools uh, within ServiceNow to check how your model is performing. So if you want to follow the tuning cycle, you go back and uh, make the changes in a model and test again, and then you know uh, tune again until it is reaches to the acceptable quality, um, and then again deploy uh, on production. Uh, keep eyes uh, over your model performance, um, and then again follow the improve loop here. If you see some drift in the model performance, so again test cycle. So this is what the typical cycle that we recommend to follow uh, to tune your. Uh, to keep your model up to the mark yeah uh before going further i would like to just let you know the feel uh how it looks like basically um if i can show my instance here so i am here employee center in my service now instance uh if you can just quickly um, give you an example how it how smart uh, NLU can be. So I'm a user. I'm interacting with uh, with my virtual agent, and this virtual agent basically is connected with the NLU models. So let's say if I want to know what is NLU, yeah. So you will see a uh, system will start responding. Uh, you know because it determined the the intent behind. Uh, 
behind this are trends, right? So basically, user want to know about uh, uh, NLU or natural language understanding, even smart enough to uh, differentiate NLU versus natural language understanding. So you can see the responses from uh, VA. Uh, you know, instead of asking multiple questions directly, I have uh, uh, results with me. And no more. So there is a there is a virtual agent flow behind it, which is utilizing the capability of NLU to identify the intent to uh, you know uh, make a more relevant responses to the user. Yeah. So this is about the, the very quick uh, basic uh, you know example of how capable NLU is basically. All right. So let me go back to my presentation. And I can see there are a few questions. Already, already done. Okay, so how much testing tuning should we do before we deploy? Should aim from okay, I'll come back to this question on the training tuning. What is the source of information for what is NLU? I will also explain this source of uh, uh, NLU. I will show you the flow, very basic flow. Uh, there is a question, it is taking details from Google about NLU. No, you you can, of course, uh, it's up to you. You can configure uh, the background uh, uh, of the responses. So responses can static be, uh, res responses can be from, um, you know, uh, service now instance. So you can configure those uh, uh, things in the background, background in the virtual agent flow. All right. Um, okay, so let me continue here. Um, there are a few questions I'm keeping on hold for now. Okay, so we we touch base on the um, NLU tuning cycle, and before going the best practices, there were there were a few questions. Uh, what is the how we can you know uh, tune the model uh, and those things? So I would like to just give you the best practices around uh, model planning. Um, so you can utilize the workbench within ServiceNow um, to create your model, to um, uh, use the out-of-the-box model that we already supply with your instance. Uh, and of course, if those are not sufficient, you can always create new models. You can uh, tune your models uh, uh, as per your need. So um, so always recommend to you start with out-of-the-box models that we supply with your instance. Uh, use topics and intents for actionable content. So um, if you um, you know uh, if you recall the basics of uh, a workbench, and uh, you need to define the intents and utterances. Um, in case people they are not aware, I would like to just quickly show you how the workbench look like. Uh, yeah, so if you go to instance uh, search for NLU, um, then you will you will see the the NLU workbench here, and this is how the workbench look like. So I clicked on models. And if you see, I do have a couple of models already drafted. You can see a couple of models, uh, you know, uh, pre-supplied with your instance. So you can utilize those models uh, as a starting point. Then you can always uh, create your own models. So if I take example, it, it's very easy in the workbench. Uh, you can create model from blank or you can import uh, from CSV. Um, you can use pre-built model as well. So if I just quickly show you the model which I'm using, NLU, right? This is what the NLU model uh, behind the VA conversation. Yeah, so you can see here, I defined one intent here, a um, couple of entities. Um, so not going to detail uh, because this session is for best practices not to implement the models. Uh, but if you see here, uh, this is what the intent, uh, which really picked by VA when I tapped what is NLU in the virtual agent chat box. Um, VA was able to determine what is the intent behind the, the question. So this is what the intent was and how it was, uh, how NLU was helping. So NLU was able to help VA uh, by having those uh, sample utterances and uh, this particular model trained on these sample utterances, right? So this is what the the background brain behind NLU and someone asked about the flow. Um, I think if you go to your virtual agent conversations, uh, conversation interfaces, uh, go to virtual agent settings, you have to enable this option. 
to use start using the NLU and of course you can configure uh, different NLU providers by default it comes with service now uh, NLU provider but you can always configure uh, more if you have you can configure the IBM Watson or uh, Google uh, or Microsoft uh, NLU providers as well so yeah so this is what the settings and if i show you the quick flow which i was using so you can see this simple uh, flow in the virtual agent designer um, you can see this is what the flow configured and based on this flow i was getting the answers or relevant uh, responses uh, the interesting part is um, whenever you want to use nlu in your uh, virtual agent flow uh, always you need to go to properties and uh, select the uh, that topic, uh, uh, sorry, um, this one here, NLU model. So you remember I have one NLU model already pre-configured. Um, so this is how I can associate my model. Uh, I do have all the other models as well. So I want to use NLU model here to help VA to, you know, utilize the NLU capabilities uh, during conversation. And I, I can also define the intents. So if one model is having different intents, then I can select what is the intent I want to, you know, VA uh, predict for this particular conversation. All right. So you, the moment you configure the NLU, then you will have this kind of page enabled in your designer, VA designer. Right? So you can see utterances and entities, uh, everything here. All right. I hope this answers a couple of questions. Let me go back uh, to my PPT talk about the best practices so yeah we were talking about the out of the box models right always use topics and intents um, for to define your actionable contents um, uh, fill knowledge gaps by building uh, needed search content um, um, try to avoid creating intents that can be easily uh, solved by um, AI or there is offering um, AI search for, within service now uh, 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 instance so you can you can always leverage those ci things for um, you know instead of b creating a model for those uh, intents uh, those can be self solved right uh, always recommended to use vocabulary items um, and sources that we already have within service now i'll tell you the i'll show you the vocabulary items and sources uh, always test and tune your model at every stage so uh, whenever you make any changes uh, always you know test the model and uh, tune according to the expectations. And of course, you know, the, the recommended guide, guide rails, which I will show you in a few minutes uh, from now. Um, then there are a couple of best practices uh, in, in the model structure and size. Before I jump in there, quick check on the questions. Um, so there was a question, so I think already answered how much testing and tuning we, sh uh, we do before we deploy. So in a couple of uh, minutes, I'll show you uh, how we you can best utilize the available tools to, you know, to make sure that you your model is performing well and uh, responding well. Of course, you cannot cover 100% uh, coverage, but you can optimize your model always. Um, so this one done the other question will there be any session about NLU implementations um there was one session a few months back um, probably you can just go to um, community or uh, youtube you will have uh, NLU implementations as well session as well all right good um there's no question can multiple models be selected for va or only one um no so as of now when you are uh, selecting your conversation you have to select only one model um even one intent you cannot select multiple intents um uh, if you select multiple intents then then your uh, uh, your uh, you know uh, va will, will confuse and start producing wrong results so you need to make sure that <clears throat> you are segregating your intents uh, uh, while building the model Good. Is there any documentation for recording going to the differences of when to use AI search versus NLU? Um, uh, I think I can help. I can attach uh, um, uh, the community links along with this presentation. So, so once you have this presentation on the community page, you you can refer uh, the links uh, 
over there to differentiate when to use AI search and uh, what is the what are the best uh, scenarios to go for an LU. All right, good. Um, so there are some best practices which I would like to highlight uh, uh, on the model structure and size. So avoid creating models that have two less intents. Um, uh, for example, less than five intents. So if you have a model less than five intents, then you're not able to achieve the uh, the right prediction um, results. Uh, you know, you will not cover the entire um, uh, uh, and so basically you will lose the coverage uh, you're not able to cover the the uh, uh, the area that you want to uh, target for NLU prediction so try to uh, make intents more than five uh, avoid creating intents that have two less utterances um, less than 15 so at least uh, you need to provide a minimum level of samples to train your model um, uh, so uh, you know so that your model can start predicting uh, uh, almost like a good amount of uh, scenarios yeah avoid creating models that are very dis disparate in size to balance the strength of so this is what something um, um, so if you have uh, say three models or four models if you have five different intents or ten intents uh, try to have some balancing uh, with the training samples so try to uh, make a similar number of utterances or similar number of uh, samples against those intents so that you, you your models uh, you know they will um, they will have a, a level of uh, matching right so so imagine that if one model is having a five uh, intents uh, each intents having some 10 utterances, another model is having a 200 or say 100 intents and each intents having a 500 uh, utterances. So it's it's not a, a great uh, uh, balancing out. Your model start uh, predicting the wrong uh, intents. Yeah. Always try to refine um, training utterances. So, so definitely model need enough training samples to balance a quantity versus quality. So as I mentioned, right, if you have a two less samples, then you're not able to uh, really provide the full coverage of your models. Uh, don't add near duplicate samples. So uh, just because you need to provide a minimum samples, don't try to make a duplicate uh, samples. Yeah. So for example, um, I need a laptop. I want a laptop. Right? So try to avoid using those kind of uh, samples or utterances while training the model. Uh, basically, they are kind of the same thing. Right. So avoid source duplicates. Uh, don't assume model can handle implicit statements like human brain. Um, so this is what something avoid using utterances or samples. For example, like uh, um, my laptop is broken, right? So system is, is will not able to differentiate since your laptop is broken. Broken, you want to order a new laptop. But if you talk about uh, you know um, to talk to any human, then human can determine the next action. Right. So try to avoid those implicit statements. Um, systems, you know, models are not smart enough to uh, differentiate the implicit statements like human brain. Right. If you really want to order laptop, then you need to provide a sample uh, like a systems broken, then uh, order laptop. So you define the actions behind it. All right. With this, uh, before I'm moving further, I do have demo planned, so probably I'll just show you all these things uh, uh, in my system as well. Before going to the next slide, which is uh, more about testing and tuning a model. So there are a couple of important tools and techniques are available supplied within your instance. You can use those tools to, uh, to you know, tune your model and get the best performance to check the performance of your model. All right, there's a question. Uh, the, oh, it's old question. What is the source of information for what is NLU question? Okay, so source of uh, question was from Ramandeep and the question, uh, answer of this question is um, the, the source is as I explained earlier, right? You need to attach your model with VA conversation. Then VA conversation will, will start interacting those intents with the help of NLU models. All right, good. Um, so if no more question, then I can keep moving it. Um, 
just to let you know there are a couple of important tools and techniques available within service now um, can be used those techniques and tools to keep an eye on your model performance to tune your model to check uh, how, how your model is doing so uh, first one is about uh, you can utilize the workbench um, to compare uh, the draft model and published version of your model so uh, if you have one model which is published on production uh, you made some changes in the model. Uh, now you don't know, you know, uh, how it is going to perform before publishing. So if you want to know before publishing, you can use this compare option. I'll show you how you can utilize this. Um, NLU expert feedback. So um, this is really a good option where um, system will give you um, option to, uh, you know, you can sit down with your expert within your team to repeat, to review a couple of actual utterances happen on your VA logs. So system can pull those logs and it can offer you to review those conversations and see if if we have the right predictions for them or not. If you want to make any changes, you can really give your feedback uh, to improve the model performance for those examples. Multimodal best testing is really a good uh, tool you can utilize, uh, you can really um, test your model uh, against a large set of uh, samples. You can evaluate the performance uh, of the model uh, against a uh, few of your sample data. Right? It's very easy uh, in the system. Uh, there is a tool called model optimized feature. So uh, here is something um, system itself will determine uh, and it will optimize your model and it will enhance the performance. Um, by reducing the incorrect predictions and improving the correct prediction. So these are the tools available within ServiceNow. Uh, you can always utilize them. Cross-model conflict review is another tool which, which can really identify um, conf conflicting intents within your models so that you can take uh, corrective actions. Uh, you know, you can, uh, you can change those utterances uh, where you have a conflicted statement or conflicting examples. So if you have, if you have conflicted, uh, conflicting statements or utterances, your model will uh, always confuse on those uh, utterances, right? What is the right intent? So I'll show you the example, um, how you can uh, use this. NLU model performance for VA is something, um, you can see the performance, how well your uh, model's prediction uh, uh, how it is, uh, how good it is predicting the intents uh, by based on VA uh, and user confirmation. Now, intent discovery is something this tool will help you to derive more relevant intents which you can build in your model and uh, how this will suggest, it will suggest based on your own data uh, which is available within ServiceNow instance. Um, so it can help you to basically to define uh, new intents to avoid the deflection of uh, incident or cases, right? So before I'm moving further next, uh, I have demo. Uh, yeah, let me show you my instance. So I'll try to explain how you can utilize those tools within ServiceNow instance. Right, so you can always go to NLU, and the first one was compare. Right, if you want to compare um, the results, how more your model is predicting, or how your model is predicting post changes uh, before deploying on the production. Right, so the easiest method would be um, if you can go oops, go to NLU, go to models. So I can take example of another model, which uh, can be, so for example, I want to check how this model is predicting. So I, I make some changes. I have added a few more uh, uh, utterances and I want to test how it is performing as compared to the, my published version of production, right? So it will give you the results. Um, uh, if you type any utterance, then uh, how it is going to perform on the current published version as well as the, the draft uh, version, right? All right, go here. Um, and I can always use this try model. 
So for example, if I want to say, I want to check, uh, I make some changes in that tenses. Now I want to see how it is going to perform uh, uh, post draft compared to the, my current published version. So you can use this. Uh, so you can see uh, this is what the result uh, on that from the trade model. And this is what the result from published model, right? So I, I can see if it is really improving. So I can see um, on the current published model or the production model, it is predicting around 94% data analytics and post changes, uh, there is slight improvement uh, in the production. So it seems like uh, my changes are working fine. Uh, they are really uh, going to improve the prediction so I can uh, publish this model, yeah. So this is one way uh, and always you can use uh, one more method. Uh, um, yeah, you can utilize something called, uh, you can use, you can do the same thing, uh, how your model is performing uh, here by using this test conversation. Okay, I'll show you this test conversation in a few minutes. All right, so this is about the, um, this is about the, model compare uh, what else the next i want to show you the nlu expert feedback so if you go to your nlu you will see this option called expert feedback loop um which which really gives you uh, you know option uh, to provide your feedback on the actual va chat logs yeah so if i can just quickly show you Yeah, so you can see uh, it basically uh, system is going to pull the data from your uh, VA log, your actual production VA log, and it is going to suggest a couple of uh, uh, utterances, uh, you know, to share your feedback. So I can see here, uh, a good example, I can I think this one is a good example. So you can see here, uh, here I have some of the intents and these are the couple of uh, utterances or samples. So as an expert, I can give my feedback whether those uh, uh, those utterances are really uh, predicting the uh, right entity here. So email is not working, it's predicting demo hub admin, which I, I don't think so it's the right prediction. So I can give my feedback, hey, um, this is mismatch or if it is predicting rightly, then of course I can say it is matched. Um, so it's kind of a, you're, you're giving a feedback to the model. Right. So if I say mismatch, then I do have option to correct it. So what is the right intent, uh, you know, uh, model should predict for these kind of uh, utterances. Right. So you, it's a really nice option to um, give feedback to your model and let your model improve uh, further. So it can improve uh, by using uh, this button here, but unfortunately I don't have uh, enough uh, samples to utilize this. But yeah, so this is how the NLE expert feedback is. I can see a few questions. Um, I'll just take a few more minutes to ask, respond to these questions. All right, next thing I'll talk about the multi-model batch testing. Um, so if I close this, yeah. So there is a tool called multi-model batch testing. You can basically, so if you recall my statement, right? So multi-model batch testing will give you an option to uh, test your model performance on large set of data, right? So this large set of data, uh, uh, you can upload here, your sample or testing data set. So I have uploaded one data set here, uh, 19, and you can really uh, run and analyze. You can uh, compare how your model is uh, com performing uh, against this uh, sample data, right? Um, so if I just quickly show you example, uh, I only run a few testers. So you can see that the report here, it is clearly showing that 46% uh, it is, uh, you know, correctly predicting 33% 33, 33 where we have a multiple predictions. Um, luckily, we don't have any missed prediction um, and 20% attendances where a model uh, was not able to predict or it basically predicted incorrect intent. So you can check the performance of your model uh, against a large set of uh, sample data, right? You can also, uh, details here, uh, what are the incorrect utterances and percentage interaction, you can also see the detailed report, which are the sample utterances uh, correctly, incorrectly uh, predicted, right? 
So this is about the multi-model best testing, very useful tool um, to check the performance of your model. Um, there is something called model optimize feature. Um, so you can actually um, optimize your model and ServiceNow um, instance is smart enough to optimize your model. Um, which is uh, which is nothing but uh, enhance the performance of your model by reducing the incorrect predictions and improve the correct predictions right so how you can do this uh, you can go to best test and go to data set one or actually not so you can run the analyze here and when you click on analyze you have option to optimize your model so you can select this um, you can select your data set against which you want to optimize uh, you can select your model which model you want to optimize so system will uh, uh, run the automation behind it and it will try to optimize your model uh, you know by removing the incorrect uh, predictions and improving the uh, uh, model performance so if i can just quickly sh show you the example so I did run through an optimization already. So you can see the, the performance. Uh, this is what your current model performing is. This is what, uh, if you, uh, once you run the optimize, then you can compare the results. If you have a better results with this optimization, then you can al always uh, update your uh, production model with this new optimized uh, changes, right? So it's really a good tool to uh, automatically enhance the performance of your, of your model uh, by using uh, this tool automatically. You don't need to really run behind each and every utterances. So system will, will really improve the performance of your model. And you can see here, right, uh, which are the intents need uh, need your, uh, and even you can see the, so these are the changes, right? Uh, once you run the optimization, these are the changes uh, system uh, did in the model to have a better uh, performance. So when someone says ticket class, um, the expected intent was book applied. Uh, current uh, model is predicting this uh, intent. However, post optimization, it will start predicting the right intent book of right. So you can you can make a decision uh, if you want to go ahead with these optimization or not. All right, this is the optimized model. Cross-model conflict, there is another concept called cross-model conflict. So cross-model conflict will give you um, could, uh, uh, you know, it will help you to identify the conflicting intents um, across your models. So if you run the uh, analysis, then you can really see um, if you have any conflicting statement within your model. So you, you can see I've already done one analysis. I can see uh, it is showing me I have two critical um, uh, instances uh, or the utterances where uh, my model uh, may get confused, right? We have a uh, conflicting utterances. So you can see this is what the critical is. So you can see exactly um, it is part of um, one of the intent uh, laptop issue. So you're, um, so basically that's showing utterance. So there is a one utterance which is going to predict open IT ticket. However, at the same time, there is a similar utterance which is going to predict hardware issues. So if any user, uh, type say laptop issues, then model is going to confuse, right? It will not perform uh, because um, it will not be able to make a decision uh, whether I should um, predict open IT ticket or I should suggest the hardware issues. So you can always uh, use this tool to have those, to identify those conflicting uh, statements and, and correct them. Or, uh, so we have two different kinds of uh, conflict reviews. One is the critical and moderate. You can, you can see moderate also. So I think this is really a good tool to uh, identify the uh, the statements which are uh, which are really make your model's performance down. And of course you can ignore, you can change, uh, you can correct them. Right? So this is another tool. Uh, there is something called NLU model performance for VA. So this is something you can utilize this one. Online. So you can utilize this tool to, to see the uh, performance of your VA conversation. So if I can show you, um, there was a setting here. So this one, 
right if you enable this then what it is going to ask you it is going to ask take a feedback from user uh, whenever any user type a question in the va it is going to ask uh, it is going to ask the feedback from user you know, whether i predicted the right uh, prediction or not so based on those responses um you will have uh, you know the data here so you can see here 20 percent of time user confirm the prediction was correct right so so basically um you know you can you can see the how your model is performing uh, on the actual va conversations in front of user um luckily zero percent time no confirmation made by user 80 percent of our time user confirmed as incorrect so you can see how bad my model is performing right so there is a good amount of requirement to review my model to tune the model so that i can have a uh, you know better uh, predictions uh, in the VA conversation even you can see the the details as well uh, which are the utterances uh, predicted um, you know predicted intent and uh, which model was predicting uh, what was the outcome so many was presented to user and users have not selected any response or any feedback right so you can see all these details as well and this is tool very useful for uh, for the actual performing your how your model is performing in front of VA. Now with this, I would like to go ahead next toward the intent discovery. So there is something called intent discovery available here. You can utilize this. Let me close all these tabs. Yeah. So intent discovery basically it give you uh, opportunity um, to discover new intents which can deflect uh, the incident on on your uh, instance it can uh, really uh, fulfill the user's request at va level instead of uh, creating incident to the user right so how you can do it system will dig out your data available on instance and it will start showing you the potential intent you can build in your model to avoid those uh, uh, incident right so if i just click on run analyze then um can do it now so you can um you know which are the fields you want to analyze uh, so you can select um, for my example i have gone through the incident so give me the uh, potential intents from the incident table right so you can run this report and how it will look like it will look like something like this so if i see this report then I can clearly see there are few intents which I can build in NLU and it can start answering the, the questions raised by users uh, in VA instead of going, uh, let them go and create incident, right? So I can create one intent around employee payroll. So this is what the data you can use to create new intents and uh, you know, uh, this is something coming from your instance, your actual data. So uh, always trustworthy, right? So I can build one intent here to avoid at least 293 of incidents in future. Or I could have avoided 293 incident uh, by building this intent within my VA conversation, right? So it can satisfy the answers uh, raised by user within VA instead of let user go and create an incident for this small uh, or whatever problem asking so this is what the intent discovery is very useful tool all right before i go into the next section i would like to take a few questions um uh, you expert feedback loop would you recommend having expert review logs once a week for the first month or so to refine the model something we have to periodically do um yes yeah, so i would recommend yes we we do need to periodically review because you will always your instance will have a new data. So, um, you know, uh, try to review it periodically and see if you have a good percentage of uh, uh, records showing for new intents. Always you can create new intent uh, based on that. Yes, it's recommended. All right, good. Now the question is, can this feature be available in PD instance? Uh, Development instance, I, uh, I think, yeah, developer instance. Uh, I need to check if it is really available on PD instance uh, because there is separate plugin for those advanced NLU features. So if you go here, uh, you can see uh, these are the advanced features. 
So you need to install the plugin uh, for to you enable these instances on your on your uh, NLU. So I need to check on the PD. I'm not sure what the developer instance they are available or not. All right. There's a question. Multi batch performance test for NLU. It is multi batch performance yeah that's that's what the question uh, that's what the answer is yeah, i need to check if really it is available on pd uh, or not all right there's another question apologies if i missed it but do you need performance analytics to run intent discovery no uh not at all so uh you uh i think what you need is is data on your instance <laughs> Um, to filter out. So this data is coming from tables within ServiceNow instance. So if you have data in um, instance, then of course you can drive the intents and you can discover the intents uh, from your sample data, from your uh, table data. All right, good. If no more questions, I'll just go forward. Uh, let me go down. All right, so we covered this. Uh, um, so you can also, uh, review the workbench properties um, uh, though we have our you know default uh, settings available but you can always uh, review and tweak based on your own requirements so for example maximum number of utterances per intent right so uh, recommended is uh, less than 200 uh, uh, you know so at least minimum five and less than 300 so we put together 200 as a default uh, how you can review these settings uh, system properties you can review or uh, or i'll show you how you can review so there is a one settings option within nlu you can you can review those settings and and tweak out according to your uh, scenarios so you can see a lot of settings are available i'm not gonna um, highlight everything but you can see uh, there is a conflict detection so if you're using conflict uh, detection uh, tool then uh, these settings might be important for you uh, you know you can set that threshold for uh, critical conflicts and moderate thresholds uh, you can also uh, maximum number of records for intent discovery classification. Right now, minimum is 10,000. Uh, maximum is 300K. So uh, minimum we need at least 10,000 records uh, to use the uh, intent discovery. Right, So you can change, but 10,000 is something recommended. Similarly, you can review other um, settings as well. Uh, the maximum number of rows in a batch test, uh, you can restrict the, the number here uh, and how you can review these settings so you can ask your uh, admin to go the instance and either you can go here type nlu go to settings you can see those settings here yeah so ask your admin to um, keep reviewing those settings and uh, you know keep the numbers which are relevant for your uh, use cases all right, good. Uh, let me go back. All right, so this is how you can review the properties. Um, we already covered word demo, so I'm going to skip this. I would like to talk about a couple of guide rails, which are really important, um, you know, uh, kind of a best practices. So don't use unknown words in your sample utterances. Um, for example, like I am. So I is and space am is the correct word don't use um, im or uh, always use vocabulary for your uh, acronyms um, or your industry terms um, don't uh, use the the sentences or utterances which are creating ambiguities so um, you can see the outlook login outlook meeting they are kind of very overlapping intents right so don't create those intents uh, low context utterances don't use the tenses which are uh, single word or uh, not making uh, sense or um, you cannot determine the context for example using the reset it is it's not giving me anything uh, what do you want to reset right uh, don't use combined utterances uh, try to make it separate so i need a new laptop is a separate utterance and uh, i need a printer is a separate instance right there is a recommended intent structure as well um, and you can follow at least five intents as we spoke earlier 15 samples per intent minimum uh, so that you can have enough coverage and you can avoid duplicates uh, as well let's quickly move on always use vocabulary whenever uh, wherever you think we have two different sources uh, or the different type of vocabulary so you can define the um, vocabulary um, 
you know, um, so these are the cases where you can use the vocabulary. You can handle acronyms. You can define unknown words. You can define the industry specific words um, in the vocabulary, and then system will start, uh, you know, referencing those synonyms uh, whenever uh, we saw the term. Um, I'm gonna skip these types. Um, I want to show you basically. I want to show you. Uh, okay, go to go to models. There you go. So I've created one uh, bad model basically, which is having a uh, wrong utterances or not recommended utterances. I want to show you that model how it looks like, so that you can avoid uh, those utterances in your production model. So if I show you email issues, all right, so these are the couple of utterances. You can see this is my English model and I'm using the, the different language statement, right? Which we, we should avoid it. Um, we can avoid one word statements or no context statement because we cannot drive anything out of these words. <laughs> um, don't use uh, uh, non-English grammar of things like I can't. I can't is not a correct word. It cannot or apostrophe t so you can avoid those kind of utterances in your uh, models to have a better performance um what else uh, i do have a couple of things so you can avoid these kind of things i am it should be i space a m right uh, what else i can show you here okay uh, I can send email attachment. So you can avoid those things, those kind of uh, utterances to have a better performance uh, from your model. Yeah. All right. Um, good. So with this, I think we are done with the session today. Hope you learn um, best practices. I would like to have a quick feedback before wrapping up the uh, session. So I would like to... This uh feedback uh, session. So I hope I hope you learn something new. Then I would like to know if you are going to try these best practices on on your instance. Uh, right. Uh, in the meantime, let me see if I can answer questions. Oh, this was great. Awesome. Thanks for feedback. All right, good, good. Don't forget to share feedback uh, uh, post session. Also, um, try to join our future webinars or live now sessions uh, to learn more about service now offerings.